Hello everybody, this is John McCormick and today I'd like to talk to you about stalking and hacking. Now there's a big difference between the two and that's what I want to talk to you about today. First thing is when you're getting hacked, anybody can hack you for any reason and usually it's not personalized, it's not targeting just to you. It could be anything. It could be your um, credit card could have 10,000 customers information hacked which means there could be 9,999 people that they might do something with that information before it gets to you. So that's the worst case. That's I'm sorry, that's the case that you want to happen. That's the best case scenario is that you're in a large group of people that's been hacked. So so that's hacking, okay? But now you can also get hacked because you have a stalker and that's where it gets scary. That's where it gets more intense. It's because that means you're being targeted just you, not a group of people, just you. There's somebody that wants to stalk you. There's somebody that wants to hack everything that you have. There's somebody that wants to terrorize you. There's somebody who wants to play God with your life and possibly your friends' lives and your family's lives. You know, anyone that's connected to you, they're going to want to connect to them somehow and hurt them because by hurting them, they're going to hurt you. So what I want to talk about today is how to prevent all of this from happening. As far as getting hacked by a large group of people, like from your bank, uh, your credit card, or, or just anything, there's nothing you can do about that. And there could be some customer service rep that has just delicate information about certain customers and maybe your credit card and maybe uses it to buy things. There's nothing you can do about that. Those are just people randomly uh, targeting just anybody. It's not you. But now, as far as how can you prevent someone from deliberately hacking you, hurting you, someone deliberately wanting to stalk you and hurt you? The number one thing is, is prevention. And let me tell you some things about prevention. Um, let's separate people that you know from people you don't know. Let's say people that you don't know, like, I don't know, a customer service rep that you're angry with and you're really using maybe profanity at it. Maybe you're yelling and screaming and calling this person an idiot or stupid or something like that. You don't know who that person is. You don't know who that person knows. And you have to remember, when you're talking to somebody that has access to your address, your phone number, your full name, maybe even a credit card that's tied to your account if they have access to that through their company, they can do a lot of things to you. Just by having your phone number, they can find out a lot of things about you and your name. So, and sometimes in those files, there's even your social security number. And once somebody has that, they can do a lot of things to hurt you. So my, my biggest advice to you is prevention. And this is hard to do. I know when you call a, a business or you're dealing with somebody that um, has all your personal information, but you're angry at them, maybe the company, but then you get angry at that rep, and they start taking it not professionally, but they take it personally. And once they take it personally, you don't know their boyfriend could be a hacker. Their boyfriend could be someone that knows how to stalk. And next thing you know, and you won't realize where it's coming from, but all of a sudden your bank account's hacked. All of a sudden your emails don't work. All of a sudden someone breaks into your home. You know, it could all be tied to that one customer service rep that you upset because you were upset. So my goal here is to let you know you've got to bite your tongue. You've got to be polite. You've got to be nice to people that you know know everything pretty much about you. Now, a customer service rep doesn't know everything about you. So now let's talk about friends and family, co-workers, neighbors. You have to remember, these are people that you've gotten to know, you know, for years in some cases. And they know you've shared everything with some of these people. Everything. That's very sensitive information. And next thing you know, something happens and you fall out with those people. Again, you don't know what they are capable of doing. Nobody knows everybody 100%. And you don't know who they know. I mean, you don't know that their friend could be a stalker or they could know how to stalk themselves as far as hacking, I mean. And then that's part of stalking is hacking you and, and terrorizing you and playing games with you. It's called gaslighting. It's where they do so many bizarre events that it makes you even question your sanity. You start to get paranoid. 
your friends think something's going on with you that's you know they don't 100 percent believe what you're telling them because it's so outrageous because that's what these stalkers these professional stalkers know how to do is to terrorize you psychologically and they do things in such a way where you can't prove that they're doing it and it makes you d discredit you it makes you look like you're the one that's losing it that maybe you're the one that's hurting them and that's what's really interesting about these stalkers is that once you know who they are and you're telling everybody that you know who it is the next thing you know they're saying they're the victim because you're bashing their name you're you're saying these things that aren't true about them but yet you know they're true it's just that some of these people are so clever that they know, they have connections like cricket detective friends or just criminal friends or or they they stay in the dark web all the time dealing with criminals uh... you don't know what they're doing and to back back up again talking about friends and family and neighbors you have to apply the same rule once you start seeing the red flags and you know something's going on this person ew, my goodness i don't know about this person and i don't like them anymore i don't want to know this person anymore no, you've got to know them. What you've got to do is keep a, a positive relationship with them, but slowly back away, slowly don't be available, slowly have real plausible excuses. You know, eventually these people, you know, they're going to go on and they're going to find other people to to uh, associate with and, and unfortunately possibly hurt, and it's not going to be you because you've seen the red flags. Don't ignore the red flags. Let me tell you some red flags. If they share with you something that they want to do to somebody, like say they use the terminology, oh, I wish I had more information about them so I could ruin their life and career. Or they say something to you, oh, you know, I could drain her bank account anytime I want. Or they say to you, oh, I hate that person worse than I hate so-and-so. And then you know how much they hated so-and-so. Um, especially if they say they hate you more than they hate somebody that you know they've hurt, you're in big trouble, okay? So mainly it's prevention. But let's say it's too late. You know, you did all those things. And um, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. But what you've got to do is not react. That's all I can tell you. Once you start seeing the hacking happening, your emails, your Facebook, your Twitter, um, even your credit card and bank accounts, they're all the, of a sudden all the passwords are changed. As long as they don't take your money and as long as they don't use your identity, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do legally. Nobody's going to help you. The police won't help you. The Federal Trade Commission won't help you. Um, the FBI won't help you. And your friends and family may think, you know, you're losing your mind because you're saying all these things. That yet you can't prove, even though you know who's doing it, you can't prove it. You know, and um, so I'm assuming at this point that you know who it is. In a lot of cases, you can figure it out. And they'll make sure you know. They'll do something weird like, like all of a sudden you'll get reminders on your iPhone that you don't say you know you didn't put there, but they're like events of your life. They're basically saying they know all these things about you. But if you would show that to someone else, they would just think you put them on there. So, you know, you got to... You just you got to have solid evidence, and unfortunately, you probably aren't going to get it. So the best thing you got to do is don't react. So that's this is my motto: take action without reaction. And if you don't know for sure what to do, if you're in doubt, wait it out. It's better to do absolutely nothing, even though all these things are happening to you. It's better that you do nothing at all, nothing. And that's what's going to drive those stalkers crazy. When they see they're not getting to you, that you're not running around like a chicken with its head cut off, changing all your bank accounts, changing your credit cards, um, you know, changing all your locks in your home, which, you, by the way, you do need to do that. You need to have a real professional lock. Once you know you've been broken into, the locks you got to get are the kind, they're kind of expensive, about $300 for installation and everything. But they have like two locks on them at once, so it's really hard to pick them. Actually, it's impossible to pick them. They'd have to knock your door down to get through your door. Now, there's nothing stopping them from breaking your glass window and coming in, but at least that would be evidence, see? And these people don't want evidence. They don't want any proof that anything you're saying is true. They want people to think you're crazy so that they won't believe you. And But at some point... If you are being stalked and you can't handle what's happening and you are reacting the way they want, unfortunately, it's just going to get worse because they know they got to you and they're going to keep getting to you. Now, there will be periods of time they'll leave you alone because they got other victims, you know. 
But they'll come back, oh wait, we haven't bothered so-and-so for a while. Let's go after them for fun. So I don't know what else to tell you. Just prevent it from happening. Bite your tongue to anybody you don't like that you're upset with or you're upset calling into some company. Be nice and slowly back away, especially if you know these people. And stay away. Stay away from them, but do it in a nice way. But if you've crossed the line and somehow you've upset them and they're out to get you, I'm really sorry to tell you, there's not pretty much anything you can do except just don't take any action and just wait it out and hope that, well, you don't really want to hope it, but at some point they do something where they do leave evidence. And then finally, you know, you can, the police will get involved, the Federal Trade Commission in case it's your, um, your identity being uh, stolen and they've used it in some way, then you know, you, they'll do something. There's also services out there that will help you um, monitor your credit accounts. You can put a fraud alert on your, um, all your um, credit, at the credit bureau for your credit report. You can hire these services that will monitor even your social security numbers so nothing will go through without your permission. They'll email you and make sure it's you. So there's some things you can do once, you know, you think someone is going to hurt you. But again, the most important thing is prevention. So good luck. I hope it never happens to you. All right, have a good day. Bye. Hey everybody, this is John again. I just wanted to finish up with uh, talking about stalking and hacking. I kind of had a lot of that um, discussed in part one. This is part two. And um, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about it. Um, of course, um, you can tell sometimes when you're being um, hacked, obviously, your passwords are changed with your emails, um, your bank account, your credit card. Um, it doesn't mean necessarily that they've stolen your money or they've used your credit card, but if your passwords are changed and you didn't pa change them, obviously you've been hacked. I mean, a lot of people on Facebook has had that happen too. So it's not uncommon sometimes for like Facebook being hacked but if your credit card or your bank account or your emails have been changed, then that's pretty good indication that somebody might be personally targeting you. And what can you do about it? How can you tell other than that? That's a big, that's a big sign that something's happening. But let's say that hasn't happened yet. What else can you do? Now, a lot of times what will happen is they will wiretap uh, your phone. You know, they will... Uh, listen to your calls. Um, they will, um, you know, just keep a record, maybe even record what you're saying. Now, how can you tell that? You can always tell your phone is being hacked by a couple of things. One, the back and even the front of your phone will get really, really hot, and then the battery will start running down very quickly. Um, and you can tell that. I mean, I've been on my phone for maybe an hour uh, checking news stories or YouTube and it's just as cold as ice, the phone. And the battery stays up high, but when it starts getting really hot, like I said, and the battery starts running down quickly, that's, and you hear like cracking uh, on the phone or the person when you're talking to someone or um, they sound like they're in a well, those are real, all three of those, if they're happening at the same time, someone's listening to your phone call. That's, that's just a given. What can you do about it? Absolutely nothing. Don't go and change your phone number. Don't go and change your phone. Because if you do that, what's going to happen is they're going to then, that puts a target then on your friends. Because they've already gone through your uh, contact list and they probably already hacked into each one of your friends' phones and their pictures on their phone and everything else. You just have to understand, they're not just coming after you. They're going to check into every one of your friends, every one of your contacts, and they're going to stalk them but without being uh, noticeable about it. They're not going to change their passwords or do anything like that. They're just going to eavesdrop on the conversations and that's how in their phone records and that's how they're going to get your number your new phone number so you might as well not waste your time don't change your phone number don't get a new phone nothing you can do is going to change them from hacking into your new phone and your new phone number that's just a given so just remember that you are being monitored that someone is listening to your calls if your phone is really hot now another indication 
that your phone is being hacked is the location of where it's saying you're at. Now how do you figure that out? You could type anything in like Staples or um, AMC for the theater or something and then see where it gives you um, the recommendations of where to go. Now if it says say you live in San Francisco like I do but it's it's giving you locations in Los Angeles or Hawaii or Las Vegas and then what you want to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom and it'll tell you where your location is. So if it says you're like hundreds of miles away or all the way across another the state, you know, uh, or across the nation, um, those are indication that someone is right at that time also hacking into your phone. Again, there's absolutely nothing you can do. You can block your locations, it's not going to work. They can still hack into your phone. So you just have to remember to be careful what you say and let your friends know too to be careful what they say on the phone. Otherwise, um, they are going to listen to you. Now let me think if there's anything else I wanted to tell you. I think um, that's mainly it. Um, one of the main things though you need to do is document, document, document everything that happens from the very beginning. As soon as you know something has changed that's unusual like your password being changed for your bank account or your credit card, that's pretty serious. Um, you, there's no reason either to get a new credit card number or change your bank account. I mean, you can do that, but chances are they're just going to hack into it again. All you can do is change your password, see if there's any other uh, security measures that your bank and your credit card or anything else can be used. Now, something really um, uh, great that you can do is do not use yahoo.com. It is the worst email that can be hacked so easily and once it's hacked it won't even let you change your phone number it won't let you close the account there's nothing you can do you just lose that account what you really want to do is gmail if you do gmail what will happen is you can do two-step verification where they have to um, call you or um, send you a text with a, a code that will let you go on now you know, maybe they've hacked your phone. So they're getting the code first and they're going in and they're going to change it before you do. So you never seem like you can get control of it, but you can. What you want to do is generate code numbers. That means when you don't have your device, which is your phone, uh, you can type in these codes. So Gmail gives you a lot of opportunities to get back control of your account, uh, your email. So that's what I highly recommend. Now there's a couple more things you can do. If you don't want them to see the history of what you're doing while they're not hacking you, but, but before they get back on, you know, they can look at your phone log, they can read your texts, um, you know, they can pretty much see where you've um, researched on the internet, if you've used your phone. What I highly recommend is when you're done with a text, erase it. When you've done with an email, erase it. When you um, have looked things up on uh, your phone, as soon as you're done, erase the records. Don't keep anything on your phone that lets them know anything you're doing, but the one thing they will be able to do is listen to your calls and possibly record them. So just think about your calls as putting it on the TV and everyone can hear it, okay? so. That's what I want to tell you with this uh, particular part two of stalking. I will come back with part three with a little bit more information, but the main thing you need to do right now, again, like I told you in part one, do absolutely nothing. No reaction. Um, you may, like I said, you could change your passwords and all of that, but just remember, you know, they're probably going to hack into that. So prevention again. Uh, put some extra security on all your accounts if you can and that's it prevention um, and just do not react when something does happen uh, don't let them see that they're getting to you just keep on living your life because chances are they're never really going to ever do anything severely to you because they're cowards and they just want to psychologically hurt you and make you look terrible, you know, like discredit you to other people. So that's only if you react and, and let them get to you. Just be happy, live your life, and eventually they're going to go on to another victim, hopefully. So that's what my message is to you today. And document, document, document anything suspicious. And I wish you the best of luck, and thank you for listening. I really, really care about you. 
and I want to make sure you don't have to ever suffer um, through being stalked or hacked. So thank you and have a great day. Hello everybody, this is John and I wanted to give you part three of about stalking and hacking. So we've talked a lot about just what they've been doing like for example just hacking your bank accounts, your credit cards, things like that. What we need to talk about now is when they take it to the second level, the next level. And that level is when they actually are doing things in person to you. Now the first thing could be um, breaking into your apartment. As soon as they've done something where they've crossed the line, where you have some evidence or something going on, then you need to call the police and you need to file a restraining order or you need to just file a police report. And the benefit of filing a, uh, a police report is it does def definitely start a, a record, a legal record of what you feel suspicions are, especially when you know who the person is, but you can't prove it. At least let the police come, dust for fingerprints, see what they can find out. Now the second thing is filing a restraining order. Now chances are you're not going to get it because you don't have enough evidence. That's okay. When you file a police, uh, when you file a restraining order, that becomes public record. So again, you have a record, a legal record, that you have concerns about this individual. So that if it does get escalated, and you have a little bit more evidence, um, you will get that restraining order, and then the police will get involved. And then it'll be a legal issue where hopefully they get arrested or at least get investigated. That's what you want to do. And um, but now, let's say they do um, start harassing you in person. Now this person probably won't do it themselves because they're a coward. Uh, they like to hide behind a computer and be a bully and do different things like that. And they use their friends to do the dirty work. So for example, let's say you're leaving your home or your apartment building and someone jumps out in front of you and kind of won't let you out. Or you come back and they won't let you back in the building or your home. Definitely call the police. Always call the police when it's something in person. Now another thing could be you could be walking down a street and you can tell someone's following you in a car. Again, call the police on your phone, um, if, especially if they jump out of the car and try to intimidate you. Um, another thing is is when you can tell you're being under surveillance. Let's say you see this car parked outside your home and then you go to your friend's house which is far away and there's the same person that you can see in the car sitting there. Okay, that means you're being under investigation by somebody who has hired this person who's stalking you. Um, so you should call the police and report that there's a car sitting there for four hours or whatever and it's a suspicious person. Um, let me see, what else could you do? Um, well, again, if, you, if your apartment gets broken into, here's what you got to be careful about. If your phone is also hacked at the same time, what can happen is when you make a phone call it's diverted to somebody that's working for the stalker and they'll pretend like they're the police or they'll pretend that they're your bank when your uh, password doesn't work they'll even know how much money you have in the bank because they've already hacked it so that's their way of letting you know that they see your account but the truth is they won't know your call-in passcode never give that out even if they ask you if you can if you're suspicious that it might not be the real person but that's what happens when your phone is being hacked. Every call you make will be diverted to someone that they work for. Now this is where it gets tricky, is that if your apartment's been broken into or your home and you want to change your locks and you think your phone's being hacked, do not use your phone. Go to someone else's phone, a neighbor or a friend. Uh, friends are kind of um, risky because they could be also hacking their phone too but someone that's not related at all to you friend or family use their phone even a hotel might let you use their phone and try to find a locksmith that's legitimate or at least get a referral from somebody um, make sure it's a good lock like I mentioned I believe in part one this is part three of my stocking series but I believe I mentioned it before don't just put any lock on there it can be picked you got to get a lock that is special made. It's where you register the keys. Um, you'll, no one can make a copy of the key without showing identification, proving that it's you, and then you'll get a key. But those locks are expensive. Um, with insulation, it could cost you up to $300, but it's well worth it. And also, uh, with that lock, uh, it's impossible to pick it. They would have to knock your door down to get in. Uh, again, there's nothing you can do if they break your glass and your window. 
But again, even if they do that, um, that's going to be evidence, and they don't like evidence because then the police will get involved and they'll be under investigation. Here's the biggest thing I want to say to, to you. If you know who's doing it, tell everybody under the sun. Tell, go on Facebook and mention their name. Do anything you can to expose them. Now you'll think, well, maybe they can sue me. Maybe they'll sue me for um, harassment or ba bashing their name or slander or maybe they'll follow a restraining order on me. No, they won't. You're the last person they want to see in court. You're the last person they want to have to deal with in person. So don't worry about it. Tell everybody constantly under the sun every that you know who it is. Tell them what they've done to you and warn them because a lot of these people, especially on Facebook, if it's a Facebook friend that turned on you doing this, then um, they have a lot of mutual friends with you and these people don't won't know what to do but you need to warn them the nice thing about warning them is all of a sudden you'll get personal messages and say you know even without you telling me who it was I figured it out they did the same thing similar to me they even stalked my friends so you're not alone always tell everybody even if they think some of the things you say are far-fetched and you know maybe paranoia and you know they question you whether you it happened or not tell them anyways because you know it happened and eventually you will be vindicated and you will get justice because people like that who have the big ego and hot-headed they make mistakes and eventually they will get caught so good luck with that and just all the best and I wish you guys will never have to deal with that one quick more thing I wanted to mention is Everything can be hacked, especially um, even this camcorder I have could be hacked. So you, especially if you uh, um, connect it with a computer that's been hacked. So you got to be very careful. The best thing you can do is carry one of these, a disposable camera. Take pictures, especially if they're harassing you in person. Take everyone's picture, license plates, number, everything. Now you're wondering, are they going to hurt me in person? No, they won't. They won't physically hurt you, because then you'll have to call the police, and then there'll be more evidence. But just in case they would, what you want to do is like push them or kick them or something just to get away. Always run away first. Run away. But if they're confronting you and getting ready to reach for you or hurt you, try to disable them briefly. Don't try to fight them, but try to get enough seconds there so you can run away. Now, let's say they've already grabbed you and they're hurting you. Uh, you can't really carry a concealed weapon like a gun uh, or a knife um, unless you're authorized to carry a concealed weapon, which would be a gun. But if you're not, it's best to carry something with you. Now, this is what I would recommend. It's a screwdriver with a really strong handle and it has a really good um, you know, end to it where you could be able to hit them or you know, do something to them quick enough to run away again. Remember, running away is the most important thing. Good luck.